why do you suppose the blues after all these years? What is it about the blues? Well, to be honest with you, the blues is, uh, the lyrics of the blues is an everyday fact of life. Even if it haven't happened to you, I'm sure you know somebody that went through some bad and good times. And if you listen to the real lyrics of a blues, some of them sang about a good time and some of them sang about a bad time. And I had to learn that. And that's what it's all about. So if you really sit down and listen to a good blues record, it might say, uh, before my time, you left me this morning, but that's okay. I catch up with you with another day. And that's what the lyrics is all about. And then you might find a blues was like, uh, oh, I'm so glad I'm with you. I can't do without you. That's another way of saying I'm glad I know you, you know. So it's all, it's all about everyday life. It don't fit me, I don't fit you, but it fits someone. And it's about a lot of different feelings. It's not just about feeling low. No, no. You just have to, man, when I first started on it, I was jumping when I got involved with Lightning Hopkins and B.B. King and Muddy Waters and them, man, you know. And uh, Muddy would sing, I got my mojo work and I just don't work on you. And I'm from Louisiana, I didn't know what a mojo was. I'm like, saying, what is that, man? And actually, I still haven't found out what it is. <laughs> but it was, uh, they was they were singing and then come and find out. So I remember got the mojo when B.B. King made I got a sweet little angel. I love the way she spreads her wing and I got to know him. That was the first person I went back to. I said, what about the spread of little wings? He said, sit down, son, let me explain that to you. And he tried to explain that to me. And that's what it's all about. It was, as I said from the stage, and I just something like, he would say, it's beat around the bush, you have to figure out what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And I, at that time, then I would begin to say, oh, I know what you mean. You know, the story is, I'm gonna beat around and you figure out what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about.
Uh, I read somewhere that you're the last of a generation. You're the last of your kind. You sometimes feel like you're the, the last man standing. I know you've lost a lot of your friends. The blues world has lost a lot of other legends and some of the trailblazers, pioneers from the early days. Well, I can't hide from that because you wouldn't believe we talked about that 30 or 40 years ago with the Muddies, the BBs, the Bobby Blands, the Albert Collins. Uh, not, not much of Albert King, because he didn't talk that much about it, but John Lee and all of us, we used to talk about who stays here long and we'd be drinking and wasn't thinking about nobody leaving us. And all of a sudden, you go to sleep and wake up, it's like my grandkid. I look at him and say, wow, why did you come from me? It just looked like yesterday I was a grandkid. <laughs> and now today, those are mine coming up there. So it's... Uh, not change the subject like my mother and grandmother and used to say, used to tell me, you know, if you don't want to leave here, don't come here. As soon as you come here, as soon as you're going to leave. So we were preparing ourselves for who stay here the longest, and the main concern was don't let the blues die. I might be the last one that came right on the mud and BB and all of them and got a chance to play you with them, Sonny Ball like Williams and Little Walter and all of them. And I don't know any other young man now that's still alive that had Even the pleasure of making records with them and hanging out with off. them, learning their lifestyle when they wasn't making enough money Some to get from here end. home. But they didn't quit, they just loved the music that well. Told, say, I don't care if I didn't get paid, but I'm gonna play tomorrow. Just before I was born, Got a boy child coming. Gonna be a... all right. He's gonna make pretty women run and jump and shout. And the world gonna wanna know what it's all about. songs when I first started out. I don't know if you know, my second song tonight was Coochie Coochie Man. And that's Muddy Waters. And throughout of my sets, from for a while ago, if I go on the other side of the world, which we can do that in the next two months, I still will let you know where I got my lesson from. Muddy Waters, Sonny Boy, Little Walter, and those guys, I got the Cooter, Lightning Hopkins, I could go on till tomorrow. Those people are the ones who did not get paid but they enjoyed what they did and they kept doing it until the day they died.
the most important thing for you personally about living a long life like you want? What matters the most? Well, number one, I would have to say is between where I would grew up at and playing blues in the white house. Now, on the 8th of December, from the name of Ivory, I was born in that time. And I grew up as a little black kid 82 years ago, and you know what time it was then. We had to sit in the back of the bar, so yes, man, folks, I had to do it for black and white, for the yes, man, and no, man. And, whatever we had to do back then. And I went there and those kids that grew up with me, they finally gone, mine gone, and they've all stopped crying when they found out that they spent the name that highway out to me. And all of them came to me and said, are you mad at me? I said, no, because we were kids, we didn't know what the hell was going on. And then those two, the White House and that, I think that's the most things that, which I said, my mother told me before she died. She said, son, if you got flowers, give them to me now so I can smell them. I'm not going to smell them when you put them on the casket. So I told the people about this highway. I said, if you're going to name a highway after me, let me see it. Because most apples, the Kennedy, the Reagan, and all that, that's after they was gone. So they made sure if I make it to a December the 8th, I'll get a chance to see the highway name after you. <laughs> You got the president to get up and to sing yeah. Sweet Home Chicago with you. Yeah. Um, was he surprised when you pulled him up? I was, because I heard uh, the girl, Eartha Kitt, did something. Was that Reagan or someone, she said something, and it went against her. And someone told me, he said, you go up there tonight and sing Sweet Home Chicago, which he was raised up in Chicago, so you probably could get him to come up. And my thing was, if he didn't come up, I was going to feel like, oh, he's a kid. I felt like crawling under the table saying, 
Oh, I goofed up this time, called the President of the United States the same. And B.B. was looking at me, and I said, well, I'm going to try it. And here's my downfall, so for his music. And I said it, he walked up and came up, and I said, thank God you saved me, Mr. President. And I went back and played since then, and he looked at me and he said, you know, I think I should put you on my payroll. <laughs> All right, all right. I heard that you taught Jimi Hendrix how to play the Star Spangled Banner. No. You did not? No, that's not true. No, I, it would have been I'm, a nice story if it was true. Yeah, but uh, no, I didn't teach him that. When I first met him, uh, someone told me in Chicago in the 60s, if I never played New York, I would never go anywhere. And I finally got to invite it to the Newport Jazz Festival in Newport, Rhode Island in 1967. And there was a club in New York invited me to come after we played the Newport Jazz Festival. And I was on doing the show. And I was going through one of those guitar slam acts, throwing my guitar away. And somebody kept whispering, man, that's, that's Jimi Hendrix. That's Jimi Hendrix. And I'm not aware of him at that time. My thing was Muddy Waters, B.B. King. I said, so what? Who is that? And he came up and she said, I had a real, a real tape recorder, and he was down, and he said, I just want to tape your show, because I just canceled my show to make sure I see you. <laughs> and I was saying, you Jimmy Henry? Yeah. I said, well, you can come up and play something. And we jammed, that's the first time I had it. saying, you Jimmy Henry? Yeah. I said, well, I'm going to come up and play something. And we jammed. That's the first time I met him. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good story. Yeah, story, right? yeah. And we stayed friends until he passed away. You know, he mm -hmm. uh, hung around me a lot, and I, le I learned a lot of things. And if you were a guitar player, or even this kid I brought out tonight, he was so amazing. I just told my manager to ask you guys. I said, he's here in Texas with me. I wanted you all to see him. 
because to be a, a 17 or 18 year old kid now, they don't play much blues on your local radio station like they did in my early ages at 18 and 19. So you almost have to just go find somebody who know it or your parent who know about the blues and introduce you to it because you don't hear that unless you got satellites, you can hear it a, a little bit now, but your big FM station don't know how to play blues anymore. Mm -hmm. No. Say you writing songs and don't know it. Guess what we came up with? 